Today I am going to tell you about facial palsy, upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron type of facial palsy. I am going to start right from the basics. So let us see what is a neuron. Neuron is an excitable cell. It has a cell body from which an exon emerges which conducts impulses away from the cell body and it has dendrites which conducts impulses towards the cell body. Now let us see what is a motor neuron. Motor neuron is a neuron whose cell body lies either in the motor cortex of the brain or in the brain stem or in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Its main function is that it controls the movement of the muscles. Now let us see what is a lower motor neuron. Lower motor neuron are those that originate in spinal cord or brain stem and directly or indirectly innervate muscle fibers. While an upper motor neuron originates in the motor cortex which is located in the precentral gyrus. The cerebral cortex is divided into six layers and its fifth layer contains pyramidal cells whose axons form the descending tracts and together these supraspinal neurons and their tracts are called as upper motor neurons. Starting from the motor cortex, these tracts pass through midbrain, pons, medulla, crossing at the junction of brainstem and spinal cord to finally entering into the spinal cord. These tracts are called corticonuclear or corticospinal tracts. Now, let us see the facial nerve. It is the seventh cranial nerve. It is a mixed nerve containing both motor and sensory component and also a small parasympathetic component. Now, this facial nerve has nuclei in lower pons. Let's see cross section at lower pons. As you can see, the sixth cranial nerve nuclei also lie at the same level. So, here we have cross section of lower pons. The facial nerve has three nuclei, the main motor nucleus, the sensory nucleus and the parasympathetic nuclei which includes superior salivatory and lacrimal nuclei. The sixth cranial nerve nucleus is also at the same level. Now coming to the main motor nucleus, it is divided into two parts by an imaginary line. The upper part supplies upper part of the face including orbicularis oculi and frontalis while the lower part supplies lower part of the face. Now let us keep it aside for a moment and concentrate on other nuclei of the facial nerve that is sensory nucleus which is upper part of the nucleus of tractus solitarius and it receives central process of the pseudo unipolar neurons located in geniculate ganglion and receives sensations of taste from anterior two-third of tongue, floor of mouth and palate. Now coming to the two parasympathetic nuclei. The superior salivatory nucleus supplies submandibular and sublingual salivary glands and the lacrimal nucleus supplies lacrimal gland. Now back to our main focus here that is the main motor nucleus. We saw that upper motor neuron lied in the cerebral cortex and their tracts provide signals up to lower motor neuron which in this case is facial nerve motor nucleus. The opposite side of cortex provides corticonuclear fibers to both upper and lower parts of the motor nucleus while the same side of cortex provides corticonuclear fiber to only upper part of the facial nerve motor nucleus. Now this is very important to remember. So the upper part of face receives innervations from both sides of the brain while the lower part receives innovations from only the opposite side of the brain. Now back to the pons. Fibers from motor root first travel posteriorly around the medial side of the sixth cranial nerve like this before emerging along with its sensory root through the brain stem and then they enter into the internal acoustic meatus. Here it gives branches like corda tympani branch, branch to stapedius and finally greater petrosal nerve. After that it emerges from the stylohyoid foramen and then supplies the entire face. Now let us see what is Bell's palsy. It is the more common type of facial palsy. 
In this condition, there is inflammation of the whole facial nerve. So all functions of the nerve are lost. So there is loss of taste sensations and also there is hyperacusis. On examination of face, you will notice asymmetry. Patient can't raise his eyebrows. He can't close his eyes. And on asking him to show his teeth, his angle of the mouth deviates to the opposite side which is normal. Now, there is a phenomenon called Bell's phenomenon where there is uprolling of eyes upon attempted closure of the eyes like this. Now let us see the upper motor neuron type of facial palsy. Back to our main motor nucleus and the things that we already know by now. Suppose there is a lesion in corticonuclear tracts on one side of the brain, then the lower part of the face which receives innervation only from one side of the brain is lost, while the upper part of the face which receives innervation from both sides is intact. As a result, frontalis and orbicularis oculi functions are preserved, so the patient can frown his forehead and close his eyes. These features help us to differentiate it from the lower motor neuron type of facial palsy. I hope it was interesting. Thank you.